medicine, it's actually quite easy. It's not even that bad, to be honest. It's just a matter of... Hey guys, welcome to another... Vlog! So today we're gonna <coughs> So today we're gonna be talking about if medicine is easy or if it's hard. Now a few people actually asked me this question, is medicine actually hard? And to be honest, I don't even think that's a stupid question. I think it's actually quite a good question because we all know that medicine is hard and so on. And I'm sure we all have a general reason as to why medicine is hard, but I thought I might as well maybe make it a bit more clear. If you're new to this channel, hi, my name is Jeevan. I am a third year medical student studying in Poland. Now I'm back at home in England due to the whole coronavirus situation. And I decided to make my next video outside. because I think it's just a change of scenery. I think it's just a nicer, change of scene okay now before I get into it I just want to put two things out there first thing is that generally university is very very difficult no matter what course you do you're gonna have loads of coursework and tests and exams and lectures and seminars tutorials so for all of you watching that I hope that you guys don't think that I'm making this video saying that oh medicine is way tough than like you know economics and that no I'm not doing that okay and the second thing is that I'm saying my opinion from Poland that is now obviously medicine is medicine wherever you study medicine in whatever country the body is still the same however I do believe that a university does play a big role in how the students are taught in terms of how the subjects are spread out throughout the year and so on in Poland I'm not gonna lie but the way the subjects are spread out it's sometimes you're just a bit baffled you're a bit like what for example, anatomy was only for first year. So the whole of first year we had anatomy and other subjects, obviously. Whereas in other universities, anatomy is spread out into two years or even three, which I think is much nicer because you really take your time in learning the anatomical structures and so on and so forth. I mean, anatomy is a huge topic. Having anatomy in that one year with a bunch of other subjects, it's hard for you to actually retain that knowledge. It's more about, you know, you're doing it, you're doing the exams, you're either doing really well, you're passing it. and then after that you retain some of the knowledge that is the case with a lot of our subjects they are put into I mean there are so many subjects put into one year like for example the second years I believe they have like physiology pathology microbiology parasitology these are huge subjects in each of these subjects we're all expected to have entrance tests every week uh, supposed to have you know obligatory lectures and tutorials so there is a lot to do for each subject and imagine when you already have so much to do in one subject they then add three or two or four more onto that your week is packed so the first thing would be a lot of material there's no doubt in one year we go through like 35 different topics i mean we go to like one or two three four big subjects and then other ones are all like subtopics the second thing would be entrance tests so every week we at least have one entrance test from one subject and these entrance tests are like these very very small tests it can range from anything like like a one or two open question or like a five question MCQ but for these small entrance tests you are expected to read like chapters or you know read pages pages over it. that is a lot to be honest and that's annoying especially when you have actually not been taught that thing you actually have to self learn and then do a test and then right after the test then they actually talk about that which just doesn't make sense and that's just one imagine having three or four per week I mean obviously not throughout the whole of med school you're always gonna have four entrance tests a week for me that was in second year and now in third year we it's pretty much one or two but still for example we have pharmacology pharmacology is a huge subject almost every week we get an entrance test in that and that is crazy for one topic you have so many notes so there's a lot to cover next again everything links to actually the amount of material now because of so much material then obviously you then have to make notes and again when you have multiple subjects you're making notes for many subjects so you can imagine it takes so much time lectures so now our lectures are obligatory Obligatory. You have to go to the lectures. Don't get me wrong, lectures are good. Some lectures are fantastic, some lectures aren't that fantastic. And sometimes it would just be nice to not go to those lectures because you can then actually manage your time better throughout the day. That's a very annoying thing because I know that, for example, in Denmark, that's not the case. Lectures are not obligatory. And I believe in England they are not as well, or maybe just for some universities and some subjects. They have the lectures pre-recorded or just recorded and it's on an online database. So you can just access it any 
anytime you want, which is amazing. They have a bit more freedom in their time, so they can plan their day however they want it. So I believe, you know, having that makes, I think it definitely makes life a little bit easier. There's no doubt about that. The timings, yeah, timings of these lectures, there isn't a fixed time. So, you know, there are only lectures from nine to three, that's it. No, it can be any time. Obviously not any time, but you know what I mean. I remember like in first year, we had biochemistry, I think at about 6.30 or or 7 p.m. in the evening, I think. For example, this year we have had classes from 8 o'clock in the morning and we're back home by 6. So you can have some really, really long days. And imagine after such a long day, you then have to cook or you, have, you know, you have to have something to eat. You have to also relax and then, oh wait, I have to study for an entrance test or I have to make notes or something something now with all of this behind you it majorly affects your personal life obviously i mean it does you don't have time to have like a strict routine of going to the gym or eating well or you know going out going out shopping or like clubbing or you know or even traveling school gets in the way of all of those things which is a very very difficult thing because you know you spend so much time studying you also want that balance. So getting a balance is actually very, very difficult. And now that I'm in 30, I feel like I have gotten the hang of it a little bit more than I was in first or second year. That's one thing is that you will definitely learn how to manage your time. So don't freak out in the first two years. Oh my God, nothing's going on. Because that's normal. It happens to everybody. The next thing is, well, the subjects themselves are very difficult. Anatomy and physiology, you know, you learn about receptors and this channel and that channel sodium goes in and out in pathology you learn all about the different diseases how they are caused and the risk factors and then symptoms it's very difficult to get your head around them as well and learn about physical examinations how to use the stethoscope how to look for this and this signs and symptoms of so many diseases i mean you know signs and symptoms they overlap in so many diseases a cough for example is in so many abdominal pain chest pain so you know knowing all of that plus the practical skills and then on top of that to know the different types of treatment the drugs so it's just one big mind map but then you just have these intricate branches and it just goes deeper and deeper so there is so much to learn and that is something I, I do find scary there's no doubt I think we all find it scary so what's scary is the fact that you, know, you are expected to know this information when you are a doctor when you are a doctor you have so much responsibility people's lives are gonna be depending on you and you are are going to be making a difference and the scary bit is knowing that information because it's very easy for us to forget but practice practice makes perfect and i'm sure we'll all get that at the end so that's obviously what makes medicine also very very difficult now, these subjects they are doable they are i mean you don't have to be some genius or something no you just have to be hard working that's it if you are willing to put in the hours you're going to be fine so hard work is the key. Some people find learning, I don't know, nerves or blood vessels much easier than others, but that person might actually find learning physiology easier than the person who can learn blood vessels really well. It's all about if you have the drive, that's the only thing. That's the only thing you need to survive in medicine is the drive to know that, you know, I want to be a doctor, I want to make sure that I'm passing and so on. And things that you as a medical student, you have a responsibility to make sure that you are actually learning. I mean, you know, the more you learn, the more you practice now in med school, the better you're going to become. Now, it's okay throughout med school that, you know, you do forget. I think I've forgotten so many things. We've all, all forgotten so many things, even the basics. But that's okay. But as long as at that time you were actually learning, because if at one point you did learn it and you did understand it, you understood it really well, when you go back to it, you will pick it up much quicker than before. And that's that's all right. If you look at junior doctors and they'll whip out their, their iPhone or iPad and then quickly just check on their notes and so on so it's very very normal for that i mean you have to take the stuff seriously it's as simple as that because if you're gonna lack in med school you are gonna severely lack as a doctor i mean you're gonna risk yourself from losing your license but you're also gonna risk other people's lives if you're one of those guys who didn't get that good grades in a levels gcses and generally in school but you're working your off and if you really do want to go into medicine just know that that you know your grades that you get there does not determine who you are in terms of your IQ in terms of you as a person and becoming a doctor is more than just knowing your theory and your practical skills it's also about the person you are because you have to be able to interact with the patients you have to be able to gain their trust in the first minute they walk in just know that just never give up simple as that just never give up I never gave up and I ended up being in, in third year so medicine it's actually quite easy it's 
it's not even that bad to be honest. It's just a matter of Alright then guys, I think I have talked about all the things as to what makes medicine difficult and so just to sum it all up, just know that is medicine hard? Yes it is, it is hard. But medicine is only going to get harder if you don't put the effort into it, if you don't put your mind into it and if you are not driven. That's why I make sure that when you are going into med school you are actually doing it because you actually want to do it man. Anyway guys, if you actually have made it this far, thank you so much, it means so much to me. And if you did like this video and it was useful or just generally interesting, make sure you do drop that like button, it really makes a difference. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, especially the notification bell. I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.